Yo, what's up? Welcome to the kind of funny first impressions of Mafia Definitive Edition. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing Adioya Jr. And joining me is the Mafia Kingpin himself, Whoa, Barrett Courtney. That's a title, Blessing. That's a title. I don't know if I can live up to that expectation. <laughs> oh, you better because you're oh, the one with man. all the knowledge about Mafia Definitive Edition. You're going to tell me all about the Mafia. But before you do, I want to let you guys know that this is, of course, kind of funny first impressions. Uh, each episode, we join you to talk about and play the new and exciting games that we're able to get our hands on. Uh, you can access it live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games or since this one is pre-recorded you can watch it first on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listen to it on podcast services around the globe of course today we're talking about mafia definitive edition barrett so you have to take a first look at oh the yeah game. uh yeah i played roughly a little over two hours of the game um oh yeah it was a significant chunk uh from what i understand it was the uh, the first five missions, and then they like jumped us ahead to like halfway through the game. Uh, so like uh, mission number like nine or ten or something like that. Um, so I, I feel like to preface this, um, I've never played the first two mafia games before Blessing, um, and I know there will be you people. Love three though. Yes, I, I really love three, and I know there will be people in the in the comments that'll be like, Ah, he's never played the originals. Why is he even here? Why is he playing this game? Uh, and it's because uh, Mafia One, at least, it, it was that game. Blessing. There's always one of those games when you're a kid. There's always and, that game. And you're at Blockbuster and you're with your parents and you're like seven or eight years old. And you see this game on the shelf and you're like, man, that seems really cool. But I know I could never convince my parents to rent it for me. Uh, so yeah. that was that was the first Mafia for me. I remember seeing it on the, the shelves of, of Blockbuster. Um, and yeah, like the, the first Mafia, I want to say, came out in 2002, uh, which the, this is like a full remake of. Um, and yeah, Mafia 3 came, I, I remember when it was like fully announced and uh, we got that reveal trailer, I was like, oh, this seems really, really cool. Uh, so Mafia 3 was really my introduction to the series and is really only like connected in small parts to the first two games. Uh, and because of like the, the story presentation in that game, I know a lot of people were kind of down on Mafia 3 because of like the... Uh, open world design and like uh, some of the bugs at launch and stuff like that, which I totally understand. Uh, but it was still that like when you got into like main uh, story missions and there's like these crazy set pieces where you're taking down uh, people from the mob and uh, it, it just like the presentation of the story was really, really cool. Uh, and so I've always been interested in the entire Mafia universe because of that, because they're, you know, remaking Mafia 1. They already remastered Mafia 2. Like I'm so excited uh, uh, to like kind of fully get the full story now. Um, and with that, um, this is Hangar 13, I believe, uh, that is uh, working yes. on this. Um, it. Working on this remake. And yeah, like, it, again, I can't do comparisons to the original, but the the story presentation how like well acted the the scenes are from mafia 3 like we're getting that in this definitive edition really um, is it do you know oh, is yeah. it like new voice actors um from what i understand it's Hold on, hold on. I had that's what I was, that's what I'm mainly I, curious about is like what what is what is new about Mafia Definitive Edition compared um, to the original Mafia? And as you're looking that up too, do you know? Yeah. Uh, you probably know. Like, are the stories connected at all? Because you talked about the full Mafia uh, mm -hmm. experience, right, between the three games. Yeah. Are they? Are there? interactive elements between the stories or are, is it a final fantasy situation where each story is different um so from what i understand i, I don't know much about mafia 2 but i think it continues the story of mafia 1 in some way shape or form mm -hmm. and then there's a character from i think mafia 1 and 2 that is a character in mafia 3 so these are connected from, okay. from what i understand but mafia 3 takes place in a different city than mafia one at least so mafia one uh takes place in uh new heaven um which i think is ba oh. loosely based on chicago i could be wrong about that uh but here we go um uh, uh, if you don't know mafia definitive i'm reading this uh from a from a, a guide thing uh if you don't know mafia definitive it is an, it is, is a comprehensive built from the ground up remake of the original mafia it features an updated script with uh filled with rich new dialogue expanded backstories and additional cutscenes, as well as new gameplay sequences and features, best-in-class cin uh, cinematics, a re-recorded orchestral score, and other enhancements. It's the Mafia you remember, only much oh, wow. more. Um, That's actually really exciting. Yeah, and so, like, they they didn't include uh, like new voice acting in that little uh, snippet there, but from, like, what I was listening to while I was playing the game, it didn't feel like 
old audio bits, uh, you, you know, like an example is like d the Destroy All Humans uh, remake that came out. Like the game looks so pretty and stuff, but then like listening to it on my headphones while I'm playing, I was like, oh yeah, these are like audio files from like 2005. This is PS2 audio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same um, with like the SpongeBob battle from Bikini Bottom. Yeah. Remake, where it's like, this is definitely old stuff that you've repurposed into this new thing. Exactly. And so like it, it all sounded in uh, like voice acting and stuff all sounded uh, still pretty good, so I, I think it's it's got to be updated uh, audio stuff. But uh, I'm sure people mm -hmm. who are more uh, more knowledgeable will probably talk about that yeah. in the comments. And I mean, the fa the fact that like you playing it, it seems like it didn't come off as old audio. Yeah. Like that seems at the very least to be a very big win if you're playing it and you still feel like it yeah. is a current gen experience. And they're they're giving like credits at like the very beginning, like they're giving like acting credits to each of the the main characters and stuff. So uh, I don't know if it's the original cast, but uh, they they seem to be uh really like hey like we're really dedicated to showcasing that like these are about the performances and stuff like that and yeah it's like uh, fully bounced off from what i was saying earlier the um just the, the the story and the acting in this game already is like it's really pulling me in as someone who's never played the story before i'm already feeling so connected you, you play as uh um no, it's uh tommy I'm already, oh, of uh, course his Tom, name is Tommy. Uh, Tommy Angelo. Uh, Dude, if, you, if your name is Tommy, <laughs> you're doing crimes. That's like a rule in video games. Yeah. Um, he who uh, happens upon the Salieri family, uh, he kind of like helps out these two dudes, uh, Polly and Sam. And uh, Of course his name is Polly. Oh, yeah. Dude, Polly... Oh. But the, these two are like the homies, and Polly is like the obnoxious one who's like, this is in, in the time of like prohibition, right? Blessing. And like, oh, uh, yeah. so they're like secretly like dealing alcohol and stuff like that. And Polly is just totally uh, getting drunk every, uh, every once in a while. And it's really fun. Um, but like, being introduced to these characters and like uh, the the family that you get uh kind of inducted into as Tommy, I was fully in and I I, I love uh w what they're doing and uh, the story that they're setting up that I imagine is being even more sold by the um being built from the ground up these beautiful cutscenes uh and I'm so interested to see where this story goes and like how how they build themselves uh selves up as like the one um kind of controlling crime family of uh new heaven because at it, as it starts out like the the very beginning of the game the salieri family is a little more of the on the small side they they've got like a main competitor uh who like really controls like the uh the competitor has like politicians in their pockets and stuff like that uh and so i imagine a lot of the game is going to be built up uh to like take over um uh, new heaven as like you as the main family, which I'm excited to see and possibly some downfalls. There, there are uh, some hints of maybe not everything works out in the end for these, uh, crime families, but we'll see. Um, and so, yeah, like the game is beautiful, uh, in cutscenes and also in gameplay, like driving around the, the city and just like seeing all the details. Um, it, it's just really fun and cool to like drive around and like, it, it feels... It's an open world game, right? Yeah, it, it is an open world mm -hmm. game. We didn't get to do, like, a free play in my uh, preview. There is, like, a kind of free roam, go explore the city and stuff like that. Um, we were just uh, kind of... Uh, cut off to um, uh, just so uh, story missions this time around, but there are still story missions where we're driving around the city. Um, there's some beautiful, uh, beautiful shots I got. Uh, even though it's, I think a city, ba a city based on Chicago. Like I was looking over, there's like a, a bridge that looks almost like Golden Gate Bridge, uh, and it's just like some really beautiful shots here. Um, and so the interesting things that stood out to me though is that. Even though this is from the ground up remake of a PS2 game uh, that looks like super beautiful, I'm, I'm su super excited for the story. Uh, the gameplay is interesting, and not in a not in a way where I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad. But like the um, at least like moment to moment gunplay is fun. It feels a little. Um, I, I think they do a good job at making you feel like you're not like an expert at like using guns. Uh, they they even talked about like the um, okay. the character that you play as in Mafia Three is a vet and uh, like a, a veteran and um, is taking over like killing all these uh, mafia people and is an expert at guns and it feels good to play as him and stuff like that. Whereas I think they were like talking about like hey, like, Tommy isn't that. Tommy, like, isn't an expert, like, a weapons expert and stuff, so he 
feels a little more rough around the edges to play as when it comes to shooting and stuff. And I think that kind of lends itself to like how difficult like some uh, encounters with like the police or uh, like uh, other enemies can be. Um, which I find uh, really cool and interesting. And uh, the other thing uh, that stood out to me is because we're, this is like 1930, like uh, I think the story spans throughout the 1930s. And so like we get all these old model cars uh, to, to drive around in. And I, I know uh, the mafia community is all about the cars, collecting cars and stuff like that. And yeah, it's, it's interesting to always play a, a game that's... Um, his older model cars because I can't explain it, but there's something to feel about it where it's like, this doesn't feel exactly like, a, 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 of course it doesn't feel like a modern driving around in a modern car. And so you have to like get used to like how cars turn, like especially with like how fast you're going. Like, have you ever played LA Noir? This is like the the best. No, like, uh, okay, okay. Not. Um, LA Noir was very similar with like, uh, like dr getting used to like the idea of like how Just older like the cars. handling of how an, yeah. an older car would handle. Um, and it like, it, and it's not, not a dislike for me. Like, I liked that I had to get used to it. And, like, it felt even better when I got used to it. And, like, all right. All right does like, it feel I, slower then? It, it, it does feel a little slower. It feels like a little more, like, turning feels, like, way uh, more of a challenge, especially, like, when you're going yeah. to certain speeds. But it feels so good when uh, you actually, like, pull off and, like, cut through different cars. Like, uh, there, there's a, a story mission where I got to drive around in a race car. And it was uh, super fun. But I was really bad at handling it at first just because it was way faster than anything I had driven before. Um, uh, but, it, but again, it was so satisfying to, to be able to, like, kind of get used to it and like okay i gotta i gotta do a turn up here so maybe let's like let's just slow down a little bit so i can pull off mm -hmm. the turn and not hit anything and it was it was really fun um the main thing that stood out to me of like this is interesting because this is again a built from the ground up remake um on current gen systems uh and, and stuff like that is that the one thing that stands out to me with people walking around is the animations Okay. The animations feel very PS2. Um, okay. which is, that was, well, that was going to be my next question. Is what yeah. about this, does anything about this game feel PS2-ish? Yes. And yeah, how do the animations feel PS2? It, and it, I think it's unfair because like right now I've, I'm doing a, another playthrough of The Last of Us Part 2 right now where the animation, the amount of animation. The animation is, is the best animation. It's, you'll, it's you'll, fucking you'll ridiculous. So I think it's mm -hmm. kind of unfair in like the back of my mind where I have that more recently in my head jumping into this. Um, but it, even so, it does feel kind of like stiff and like the the way like uh you run around as tommy sometimes just feels kind of off but it, again i think it's like um i don't know if that was like a, a decision that they like were like we want it to kind of still have that ps2 feel in a way for the hardcore mafia group um who who loves the the first game um but it did really stand out to me, and I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to, like, take anybody else out of it. I'm at the point where, like, I'm so sold on the the story and the characters here that, like, I'm kind of cool to, like, I, like I can kind of overlook that. Like, I just kind of noticed it because I, I thought it was – it still stood out to me when everything else kind of feels good and feels new and upgraded and stuff. I was like, huh, animations kind of look and feel weird here. Um but uh, I, I forget what, what else. Uh, so com coming off of uh, you playing and loving Mafia Three, mm -hmm. does it feel like it's of the same ilk? Like, do you notice yeah. the fact that it's a remake of a PS2 game, or could you could th could they have put this out and been like, oh yeah, there's another game in the Mafia franchise, and you playing it for the first time wouldn't even notice? Do does it feel like that at all? Um. I feel like again with the, like the, the amount of presentation and the amount they are adding to this remake, I do feel like if like the original Mafia had never come out and they like were putting this game out, like I, I think it would grab the attention of people and I, I think it would be a, a really cool uh, story for people to jump into. Uh, besides the animations, it doesn't <clears throat> feel like a p like really a PS2 game. Like uh, there are things of like the gunplay is a little weird and off, but I think that was a choice to not make Tommy feel like this overpowered, like constantly killing people kind of thing. And uh, like the, the <clears throat> riding around in cars, like does feel off a little bit. But again, I think, I think that mm. is a choice and it, it, it is a choice that I like um, uh, that you have to get used to. And like, I think about the, almost the physics about the physics of, uh, <clears throat> how to like, uh, handle cars, uh, back then, yeah. uh, like at fast speed and, and turning and weaving in and out of, uh, traffic and stuff like that. Um, 
And something that I thought was interesting, one of the uh, missions that I jumped into, sorry, I'm just like, I have so much information oh, from this. Throw Again, it, it was me. like, it was a little over like two hours. So it was just like a lot of, of processing that I'm still doing. So um, one of the missions was inter- like, uh, I'm on like a mission with Polly and Sam. Seems like it's going to be a routine thing. And then I think like uh, Polly comes out and he's got, uh, he's been shot. And then like Sam's inside and you have, you have to like, we, we got to make sure we're, we don't leave without Sam. Um, and so... Uh, you, like, have to sneak inside, and I thought it was interesting that, like, you could just go in guns blazing and start shooting everybody up, but you could also take, like, try to take as many dudes out as you can stealthily, and then uh, once you get into, like, the main room where Sam is uh, uh, being held, then you could, like, start off a fight, and I thought that was cool to, like, because the gunplay is a little harder especially when you have like six or seven dudes all trying to come after you all at once of like the balancing act uh on your part of trying to be like all right if i've got like three dudes outside and maybe like five five guys inside I should probably take the guys uh out all the guys uh who are outside and then maybe try to get one or two guys uh like uh stealthily taken out on the inside so then i only have to take uh shoot like one or two guys in like a firefight um which I thought was, like, a cool way to do it. Because I, I fucked up in that mission where, like, I think I might have taken out, like, one dude. And I left all the people who are on the outside of the building, like, alive. And then I got into a firefight. And then, like, all of these different enemies were coming around from, like, different areas. And I had to, like, pay attention to it all. Um, but it, it felt like... Um, I don't know. It, it felt fun to try to improvise and make the best... Uh, of what I can out of the city situation that I put myself in. Uh, it was really cool. Uh, and then, of course, you have missions where it is, like, you do have to go, uh, uh, like, all guns blazing and have firefights and, and stuff like that. And, again, those can be tough um, if you're not paying attention and if, and if you're not uh, really utilizing all your tools and you know, uh, finding the right cover and uh, looking around for, like, health packs and stuff like that. Um, it's really fun. And I... I I don't know if this game will be for everybody because I, I do see like the the, the PS2 design uh, is still there, and I don't know if that'll be for everybody. But like, I think if you're Mafia, if, if if you've been a fan of the series, I think this will be really fun. I know uh, the port of Mafia 2, at least on PS4, uh, what I heard wasn't great, um, and I know like Mafia 3 when it launched, uh, there were like a, a bunch of bugs and like weird stuff, uh, weird stuff that I even dealt with. Um, I. From what I've seen, like, there are, like, little things here and there, but uh, there was nothing, like, stand out to me, like, oh, this is this is going to be oh, no. really bad. And I, I was playing on PC, um, and I was playing on my system that, like, isn't the beefiest setup, um, and it was still, like, running pretty well. Um, and so, I like, I think if, if you've been waiting for this, like, beautiful um, kind of, like, upgrade of probably a little more or less of the same game that you remember. I, I think you're going to be in for a good time. If you're someone like me that can kind of overlook, uh, like dumb, weird animations and, uh, maybe some of like, just like the kind of like level designs of like the PS2 era. And you just really like good stories that are told in video games. Like again, like I'm, I can't wait to play this, this full story for the first mm-hmm. time and uh, see where Tommy's story goes uh, with the Salieri's and uh, see where it all ends up, especially like the way the story starts out where I think it's like maybe like 1940 or something like that. And like Tommy's willing to sell some people out and you're like, okay, like oh, something, snap. something, Don't do went, that, Tommy. something went Tommy. down. So again, like that intro, like the way they build up uh, him as a character and his relation, uh, like his love interest that uh, he gets introduced to. And like this kind of small uh, mafia family that he is becoming a part of and seeing them grow. Like I'm so, I'm so excited to see where it goes. So, right. so um, would you say that yeah. this demo sold you then? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I've been hold- like, I, I have Mafia 2 um, already purchased on my PS4. I've been waiting to play it until uh, this remake has come out. So, yeah, I'm totally doing like a uh, like I'm, I'm going to play through the entirety of this. I'm going to play through Mafia 2, even though I've heard the PS4 port is a little oh, a little messy. Uh, and then I want to replay Mafia 3. Like I want to take it in this trilogy <laughs> um, all the way in just because, again, I think the, the world and the stories and the characters uh, that they have created here are fascinating and I'm, I'm so excited and shout out to, uh, uh, really quick, just the, the radio, um, 
I want to give love to Hangar 13 just because the the soundtrack and the music in Mafia uh, 3 was really, really, go uh, really, really good. You got a lot of good, like, uh, early, like, early and late 60s uh, music and some, like, early 70s music. And it all, like, they it sold the tone and, like, fit into the era that they're telling the story in. And, like, seriously, Mafia 3's, Mafia 3's soundtrack is one of my favorite soundtracks. If you know me on Twitch.tv slash SadBoyBarrett, where I stream MLB The Show uh, every Sunday, I usually find some tunes to chill out to. It's usually just the Mafia 3 soundtrack. I love it so much. Uh, and then, like, the same with this, where, like, um, it's not music that I would typically listen to in Mafia 1, um, but, like, when you, like, you're turning the radio and you're listening to some of these uh, old tunes from, like, the 30s, uh, it, it's just, like, it really sells you on the time period, and I, I love it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this game. What's up, everybody? It's me, Barrett, splicing myself into the middle of this first impressions, because there's one last thing I wanted to bring up uh, with Bless, and I totally forgot to, which is that if you were like me and you never played mafia until mafia 3 came out and you liked the story but you were kind of held back by maybe not liking the kind of open world design all of the open world activities that you had to do that helps you with uh progression into the kind of uh story i i think it'd be worth picking up Mafia 1, because I, I, from what I understand, the presentation is way more linear. There's not um, any anything major that you have to do with, like, uh, taking down enemy camps and, like, the open world outside of the story missions and stuff like that. So, uh, again, like I've been saying this entire episode, um, it's the the story and the presentation and the, the cinematic feel, uh, especially uh, for this game, I think is absolutely great. And, again, I can't wait to play it. Uh, when it comes out next month. Oh, and one more thing. I know some of you hardcore Mafia fans out there, I, I did mention, I did give you a shout out for liking the collectibles of cars, but there are other collectibles in the game that I did pick up, and I was really impressed about how detailed they were. A couple, like, comics that I picked up, and, uh, like, a, a trading card that I think I picked up at some point. Really, really cool, really detailed work uh, that I thought was really special and really unique, and I think Mafia fans, uh, long-standing fans of the series are really going to dig. I don't know if they're updated from the original of like uh the specific uh designs but they're really detailed and and much like uh this game with uh, the the cars and the, the world and stuff like that it's very detailed very pretty so i think you guys are gonna have fun uh finding those things throughout the world and just like giving them a, a good hard look because yeah they're they're really pretty to look at awesome uh mafia definitive edition is of course coming out september 25th 2020 so only about a month away as of the I time know. you're watching slash listening to this which is exciting uh ladies and gentlemen let us know what you think about mafia definitive edition are you excited go ahead and leave a comment uh of course this has been kind of funny first impressions where we talk to you about the cool games that we're able to get our hands on i've been blessing that's been barry courtney until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you